Here is the statement from the league this morning. The Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors adopted significant medical protocols, including daily antigen testing, enhanced cardiac screening, and an enhanced data-driven approach when making decisions about practice and competition. The COP slash C, again, the Council of Presidents and Chancellors, voted unanimously to resume the football season starting on the weekend of October 23rd through 24th, 2020. Again, 24th is the Saturday. The decision was based on information presented by the Big Ten Return to Competition Task Force, a working group that was established by the COP slash C and Commissioner Kevin Warren to ensure a collaborative and transparent process. The Big Ten will require student athletes, coaches, trainers, and other individuals that are on the field for all practices and games to undergo daily antigen testing. Test results must be completed and recorded prior to each practice or game. Student athletes who test positive for the coronavirus through a point of contact daily testing would require a polymerase chain reaction, that's a PCR test, to confirm the result of the POC test. Coach, I, I didn't know that I would need that medical uh, degree to get through that last bit of it, uh, but really happy to welcome in my friend and colleague, Jerry DiNardo, of course, has been with us here since the very beginning on BTN. And Jerry, we had exchanged some messages over the past couple of weekends discussing how difficult it was to watch everyone else play college football and, and for us not to be together. It is exciting to think of a moment now coming up in October where we will be able to be together and watch Big Ten football. You saw the release. I know you've had some time to digest it. What's your reaction to today's decision? Well, my reaction is uh, we've been served well by our patients, and we haven't always been very patient, but when you, when you see what the commission and what the Big Ten conference has done, the, the detail in the release today, uh, I mean, just some of the words that, that you mentioned, Reverend, significant testing, significant precautions, data-driven. I mean, these are things that maybe other conferences are doing. We really don't know. But, but for a long time, we were, all, we were all nervous about not getting a lot of information out of the Big Ten office. And now it's just the opposite, right? Uh, everyone's going to be tested. Uh, we've learned from probably some of the mistakes that have been made by the other conferences. So I think the real positive here today is our patience was tested. Uh, our players' patience was tested, administration, coaches. But when you look at this release, I'd say the wait was well worth it. And, and I applaud the Big Ten Conference for making the adjustments coming out with a plan that is very, very detailed. And if I'm a parent and I see how my children are going to be protected, and, and remember, this is going to be all sports at some point. They're not going to, they're not going to do any less testing for the, for the non-football players. So for every athlete and all the Big Ten schools, men and women, if you're a parent, I mean, today is a great day if, if, you, if you've listened to and read the release. And again, it's been very clear, I think, as I've spoken to people throughout the league here subsequent to August 11th and trying to piece together kind of what the issues and concerns were, the biggest one was we don't have the ability to test every kid every day and to put them on the field with the full knowledge that they don't have COVID-19. And until the Big Ten felt like until they were in a position where they could do that, they simply couldn't play games and, and or practice, for that matter, have contact practices, and that's why it was cut off where it was. This seems to address all of those issues, Jerry, kind of this notion of the uncertainty that Kevin Warren spoke quite a bit about on August 11th. This takes that uncertainty away. Right, and, and it's because we, ha we had this crisis that we had put together a 10 game schedule and then shortly after we canceled the season. So everyone was saying, you know, why were those two decisions so close together? And, and today I think we have a reason for it until the big 10 conference felt like they could be thorough enough, which they have proven they are today with this announcement. They didn't feel comfortable letting the big 10 student athletes play. So it, it's almost coming out of a crisis 
uh, with a better solution than perhaps you would have had, Reverend, before it became a crisis. So uh, as, as leaders often do, they come up with better solutions sometimes only when it's raised to a crisis level. And I get, and again, I think we have to give Kevin Warren, the Big Ten Conference, a lot of credit for rethinking what their first decision was and coming out with a decision to play, which we all want, but coming out with a decision to play with a very, very safe way to protect our athletes. You mentioned leadership there, and of course it's something you know a great deal about, having been a head coach at Vanderbilt, LSU, and Indiana, having been on some great staffs, as well as an assistant coach, having played for the legendary Era Parsegian. So coaching is, is in your blood, it's in your veins. And now I know you look at everything through that lens, through the lens of a coach. So put us in the position of a coach now. You finally can go to your players today and tell them we're going to play, and these are the dates that we need to target for being ready. What's the first thing that you do as a coach? Well, I think we first say we're thankful for people that, that have allowed us to do this. And uh, now that we've come through this, now that we're thankful, let's get the business, people. And, 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 and as we've watched college football to date, here's what's jumped out at me. Blocking and tackling is behind where it should be. And, and I, would, I would appeal to our team, we are going to block and tackle in a very safe way but we have to be efficient at it. Special teams, guys. I, how many mistakes have we made in special teams? We, we usually practice special teams in the spring and preseason when we have all kinds of time. Now we're not going to have all kinds of time. We have to address special teams. Situations. There's certain situations that usually you cover during the 29 days of preseason. Situations that don't occur every game, the situations that may occur only once or twice a season, maybe the third and the ninth game of the season, but you cover them during preseason. So there's a lot of those type of situations. So I, I think everyone's going to be focused on all the things uh, that we're going to do. And I would the life lesson here, I think, that the way I would end a team meeting is we, we missed something that we were used to doing. We have to be grateful that it's back. We have to be grateful for every opportunity we get to participate in college athletics, regardless of what sport we play. We know how painful it was not to have it. We should be joyful to have it. Well, I echo those sentiments, Jerry, and joyful to think of a day where you and Howard and I will be back together talking Big Ten football and knowing that it's not nearly as far off as we thought it was going to be. Jerry DiNardo, great stuff. Thanks for being ready for us so early here and jumping on with us right away to react to this big news in the Big Ten today. And obviously, we'll be talking to you here in the days and weeks to come. Thanks, Robert.